The next topic I'm going to be talking about is how to smoothly cut out something out of an image and paste it over a new image convincingly. And to set up for this, I have an image of a person and a image of a flat background on two different tabs. I'll be providing these images for you if you want to follow along. And to make this work, we're going to need to work with our selection tools and a little bit of layers. And now, since you hopefully now have sort of an idea of how to use these, this should be a whole lot easier. The first thing we need to do is carefully select this person. So what I would do is come over to the lasso tool and right click and then select the polygonal lasso tool. So I just go ahead and equip that. And to start, I would zoom in a little bit by holding down alt and scrolling in. And once you start selecting, you won't be able to zoom in using that alt and scrolling, but you can uh, zoom in and out by holding down control and then pressing the plus or minus keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out. So if you're going to use the polygonal lasso tool, I would suggest starting uh, outside the image first, like here or something, and then just start making points just like this and work your way around the whole body. It's, it's going to take a, quite a bit, but not too long, but just take your time with it. And don't worry if you mess up or anything like that. We can always refine it and everything will be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Just a few things I should point out is that when you're using the polygonal lasso tool, try not to uh, accidentally double click. Otherwise, that will complete the selection. You can undo that by hitting control Z, but just be mindful of that. And also, the way I'm moving around like this is I'm holding down the space bar and just left clicking and dragging. And that will, you can see that my selection is, uh, is still kind of locked there. But once I let go, I can continue doing this. And I've gotten to a point where I'm at the hair and I just wanted to talk about that real quick. Um, obviously it's very, hair is a very tricky uh, thing to select. Uh, you can see, obviously, I'm not going to go all around here and select these little, little hairs. For now, what I would suggest is that you just go past it just like that and don't even worry about that because we are going to refine it in a way that will we will be able to capture these hairs. All right, I'm now nearing my the end of my selection. I've gone around the entire uh, body right here, and all I need to do is either double click or connect it once I see that little circle in my pointer. And once I do that, we will see the marching ants. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go up here because I actually started to mess up here. And if you did, if you did mess up too, it, it can be very hard with this background, white background, and it's it can be misleading there. There's um, some of the arm is right here that I missed. So what I can do to fix this is if I just hold down the shift button with my polygonal lasso tool equipped, if I just hold down the shift button, I can uh, start inside my selection. I can just start and select that area again. So I'm just gonna do something like this, just follow that arm. And then once I have that, I can just do any sort of shape in here and that will fill in that selection right there. And also, I mentioned this in the selection tool video, but I'll mention it again. If you had kind of an opposite problem, like if you had something like this or um, something like this where you kind of went uh, out of the selection like that, 
you can do this vice versa by holding down the alt button. You'll get that little minus sign and then you can uh, do some, uh, make a negative shape, sort of say, and just come around here, get that all in there. I just double clicked and it's gone away. Okay, now that that's done, believe it or not, that, that was actually the hardest part. And uh, the next step is going to be, uh, while you have the polygonal lasso tool equipped, you're going to see some options up here, specifically this button here, select and mask. Just go ahead and click on that and you should get sort of like this window menu, kind of like this. So essentially what this menu is, is this is a way to refine our selection, get it all nice and smooth or get those little hairs that we miss. Uh, right now we're a little zoomed in, so I'm just going to uh, hold down control and hit the minus button to zoom out a little bit. And you can see that now instead of a white background, we have a transparent background. And if you, you can uh, see a different background if you'd like, just to help make the make it easier to see what you're refining you can go over to view right here and then you can go ahead and select something else like overlay for example that will change the background to red now this doesn't actually change your background it just makes it easier to work with so i'm gonna leave it on overlay for right now and we're going to go focus on the right side right here. And all this is, all these uh, sliders and all that is going to be where we're going to be fine tuning our selection. So uh, actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, uh, maybe just like that. You can see that we have like some white right here, some edges here. And if I just go over to radius, I can start adjusting this to the point you can see that it is we have some changes happening in real time radius is going to uh, essentially change uh, sort of how far or in in or out the selection was and i like to have smart radius checked seems to be a little bit more accurate at detecting certain pixels but with that you can actually see if we zoom up a little bit more we're actually getting these hairs and i didn't even select them and that's pretty cool so just go ahead and set the radius to something that sort of seems just right but it should be you should still have like some weird white spots or whatever the color your background was if you're using a different image and we're going to focus on these four sliders right here, smooth feather contrast and shift edge. And I like to go down the line. Uh, we'll start on smooth. And if I just go ahead, if I just lower this, you can already see that the pixels are now changing. You can actually see that it's, since I have the smooth on zero, the edge is not so smooth. Now, I'd only put this up just a little bit. If it's completely off, it seems way too rough. So you don't have to go overboard on this. Just put it up just a little bit. Um, maybe seven will do. And we'll just go ahead and uh, go down the line and then we'll go back up and see if we need more adjustments. So feather, feathering is if I just do this, you can look at the um, our image here, how it's changing. Pretty much what this is doing is um, getting a gradient from the, our edges and uh, kind of pulling it out, right? So when I put up the feather, and you don't want to do it too much, you can see that it starts to pull out right here, but we're also getting that white. So this is way too much. So I'm going to just put it down. We, we really don't need that much feathering. It can get a little blurry if we do it too much. Now let's go ahead and move down to contrast. Contrast should be fairly high, just like that. And the edges will be less 
faded, uh, hence contrast. You get uh, more more definition like that, and that should be pretty high to get that nice hard edge, um, but still not too hard. Um, yeah, so 84%, that, that's pretty good. And we'll move on down to shift edge. Now, shift edge, similar to feather, but a little different. Pretty much this is either shrinking or extending your selection. So, for example, if I bring it up, you can see my selection uh, is now increasing like that. And I, I can still see white. If I go down, I'm shifting the edge inward. And you can see now all that white is starting to disappear. But we don't want to go too much because uh, this red right here is starting to come in. And that is, um, that is going to be transparent. So I'm just going to bring it to just about there. And then I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see a little bit better. And uh, in this image, there was some rim lighting, so like along the face. So it can be a little hard to tell, but I think that's looking pretty good. Now, one last thing we have down here is called decontaminate colors. And I usually like to have this checked. And I'll just show you what that does. If I just zoom in here a little bit more and I'll just uncheck it and recheck it so you can see what's happening. It's mostly happening with the rim lighting. We're getting a lot of that out of there. And that seems to be pretty good. You can change this. It pretty much is, it's getting rid of sort of unwanted pixels that uh, it thinks that you want to get rid of. And I usually have that around 50%. I, li I like to have that checked. Uh, just gets rid of certain pixels that were part of the background, sort of hence uh, decontaminating uh, those out of the selection. And one last thing, I'm going to change, um, well, it's already set there, um, output to, make sure that is on new layer. Just hit that right there. Um, and if you're happy with your selection, you can go ahead and press OK you look over at your layers tab, you can see that we now have a new layer with just our selection. And the layer we had before should be background, or if you brought it in a different way, it could be layer zero or whatever. It Anyway, that layer is now uh, toggled off. And we can see the background that we got rid of if we uh, unhide it like that. We had our white background again. And then turn it off, we have our now transparent background. So all we need to do now is get our background right here, or any background you'd like, any will work, and get it over to this image. Or you can do vice versa, but I'm gonna do it this way. I'm going to select our tab over here with our background and select our move tool. And I should be able just to left click and drag, don't let go, and come over to this tab, make sure you're still holding down left click, then come back into here, and you should get this kind of drop uh, pointer uh, right here. And if I just let go, we get our background right here. Okay, so right now our uh, blue background layer or layer one is on top of our selection, so all we have to do is go over to uh, the layer that we outputted with the uh, select and mask um, selection. Uh, we just have to left click it, drag it upwards till we see that blue bar and drop. And then as you can see, we now have uh, our selection now in front of our blue background. Now there is more we can do to make this a little bit more convincing. If you remember from the last video, uh, if you remember the effects, we're, we're going to go ahead and use that in this. So I'm going to have our selection layer uh, selected in our layers, and I'm going to go down to the FX button. Just go ahead, click that, and I'm going to go to blending options. 
I should get this window and I'm going to go down to drop shadow. And if I just select that like this and I um, go into the settings like this, I'm going to up the distance and you can see this happening um, on our image here. We're getting this drop shadow and you can put it, um, you can set the distance any, anywhere you like. Um, that just makes it, well, more distant from your image. And I'm going to say around there. And now it, it sort of looks like we have a shadow um, now on our background. And we can still just things like, for example, spread. Um, that can make it wider or lower. I think I'm going to keep it low. Uh, size. Size is going to sort of feather that out like that, that makes it much better like that. Um, opacity, dark shadow, light shadow, that sort of thing. And I think that's going to look pretty good just like that. And once I'm happy with that, I'll just press, press OK. And you can see the before and after, uh, after with this toggle right here. And that looks that looks much better. I'm just gonna zoom out, and as you can see, it looks pretty convincing. Now, of course, this is a a really simple flat background. It's not it's not like there's a mountain scene or something really crazy. You would not use a drop shadow in that. Uh, I'm sort of making this act as like a wall or something. Each scenario is going to be different, so just keep that in mind. So now that you know how to select something completely manually, I'm going to show you this awesome shortcut tool that you can use that will make your life so much easier. And if there's ever a situation where you have a lot of contrast between your subject and the background, sort of like this right here, um, but in this uh, our original image, there wasn't that much contrast, but it'll still uh, work pretty effectively. Uh, if I just hide these layer and go to our original layer, um, what you can do to select this very, very quickly, even with no tool, you can go up to select right here and then go down to subject. And if you just do that, you can see that now our subject has been selected. Very, very simple, just like that. Now, of course, it missed uh, some of the arm right here, and that's because there's not a lot of contrast. Uh, right now, Photoshop thinks this is a part of the background, um, and so did I. I made that same mistake doing it manually. And yeah, really awesome. I didn't want to show you that until you've learned how to do it manually first, because you won't be able to use this in every image and you need to know how to fine tune selections. So that's the absolute basics of cutting someone out of a background with, with more tools and practice. You can really make it look like they are really, really there. Uh, anyway, I hope you can see now how some of these tools can be put to use. We use the selection tools, move tool, layers, and effects, all to make uh, this happen.